Soul Simmers, and welcome to The Sims 4 Crystal Creations Walkthrough. I'm Shawnee, a global community manager here on The Sims, and I cannot wait for you all to see the goodies in the stuff pack today. Personally, I love crystals. I used to collect them as a kid, so I am so excited for the stuff pack. You have no idea. But the stuff pack isn't just about collecting pretty rocks. We'll be introducing you to a brand new skill, jewelry crafting. And that's not all. Got so much to cover today. The new gemology table and the gemology skill, the new jewelry you get to make, and there is so much of it, the gorgeous new build by items, and the dreamy new cast items, and of course, crystals. You can charge them, you can sell them, you can even propose with them. It's going to be a fun time or maybe a little chaotic because it's The Sims after all. But before we jump right in, let's take a look at the trailer for Crystal Creations. That trailer gets me hyped up every time. Let's dive right in and meet our team. On screen, we have our producer of the pack, Lauren, who will be walking us through gameplay today. Tervetulo, Simmers. How's Katutustua? It's really nice to meet you. I'm Lauren, but I'm better known as Producer Scoob here at Maxis and in the Sims official Discord. Super excited to walk you through Crystal Creations today. And off camera, we have Steven, the art director of the pack. Hi, thanks, Johnny. I'm Stephen, the art director, and it's great to be with you today as well. And with that, let's dive right in. I'm so excited to see what you're going to share with us today. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's going to be a good time. So we've got our little gemology workshop house here loaded up in Oasis Springs because we're going to take our first sim here, Serena, our collector of crystals, to go on a bit of a hunt. Uh, in Crystal Creations, we have added three new crystals and three new metals to help you, you know, spice up life a little bit. You can craft your own jewelry out of them. Of course, they are beautiful display on their own. And I really like coming to Oasis Springs and starting here uh, because there's lots of these little dig sites around the world to look for crystals and metals um, or fossils. As you can see, this one, uh, pro tip, if you didn't know, the dig sites kind of show you what you might get when you dig from them. This one is going to have fossils fossil probably so we might go look somewhere else but that's how you can start your journey of collecting more crystals i love that you can just dig up crystals everywhere are they available in all worlds they are available in most of the worlds um, so a lot of the worlds the neighborhoods within them have these various dig sites that you can see like this uh, you just have to go searching for them the this dig site's gonna have some metal so let's go see if we can't find some in that one uh, but that's not the only place you can find them if you're missing out or not able to find them sometimes they take a little while to respawn if you've dug them all up recently uh, you can also purchase crystals on the computer 
uh, we've made sure to add some of the crystals we've added with this pack to that interface. And if you have get to work actually, and you are in the scientist career, you can ask your scientist colleagues uh, to give you crystals, which uh, is pretty fun if you're playing around there too. This one looks like it'll have some crystals. So we'll speed up to let her dig a little faster and see, ooh, we found some rose gold. Oh my gosh. Rose gold is one of the three new metals <laughs> that we've added with Crystal Creations. And it's actually a very rare uh, metal to find out in the world. So that is truly incredibly lucky of us uh, digging out and about. Are there different rarities for each metal and do they have like a ranking? Yes. So the metals and crystals, uh, we've made sure that they span across being common, uncommon and rare. So for instance, silver, which is one of the other metals we added, is common. Gold is uncommon and rose gold is quite rare. So that's why I was so shocked to see us dig it up on our first try. That really is um, not what I expected. The crystals follow the same pattern. Uh, let's see if we dig up one of ours when she digs this. That was a happy little crystal dance. Ah, uh, it's a time capsule, which is still cool, but not quite what we we're looking for. So what we'll do is head on home and buy some crystals and we can show you some of those rarities. We've added jade, amber and moonstone to the pack with crystal creations. So if we come on in to our beautiful, beautiful workshop, we go to the order button and we find purchase crystals. You can see here, you've got a whole treasure trove of them. And um, it is the commons and uncommons, the rares you still have to hunt for uh, available to purchase. So we'll just, we'll buy a few. Let's, let's have her do that. And we've come on home to our crafter who looks like he could use something to do uh, at this amazing, beautiful workbench. Um, Stephen, I would love for you to talk a bit about the workbench and, and just this workshop in general, because I am obsessed with how it looks. <laughs> uh, thanks, Scoob. Um, yeah, I'll talk later about where we took our inspiration for the styling later when we get more into the details. Um, but as for the majority of these elements, you know, we looked through lots of reference of jewelry studios. And based on that inv investigation, we found like it's generally workbenches, <laughs> um, display cases, oh, no, like... desks for sketching, oh. um, uh -huh. and a lot of display cabinets, as you'd expect. Oh. So, you know, just in that little shot there, you can see we've got like nice brass display cases up there. Um, there's the, yeah, perfect. Yeah, and that's that's the kind of look we were going for which I'll discuss later on, but it's, it's kind of got that nice warm feel to it. There's kind of vintage antique quality to everything, but not so much that it, it feels like, you know, Victorian or, or set way too far back in the past. Um, yeah, and you've got some nice elements there with the, uh, our jewelry case and our display cases there. So again, it was just a lot of pieces that we saw that occurred naturally through these jewelry studios, um, but we kind of made a dedicated effort to switch it into kind of more a character rather than like, you know, your general box store type furniture. I really love all the spots through. for clutter. Yes, I was oh, yeah, just about to say there are the so many slots, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can show off anything you want. Uh, I'm gonna pull over this uh, jade crystal actually that we've got chilling outside because they they will slot just about anywhere. You can see we've got some slotted over here in this cabinet. We showed off earlier all of these slotted over here. We wanted to make sure that if you are someone who is proud of the collection of your crystals, of your jewelry, of anything that you might collect in The Sims, that there is a place for you to show it off with these build items. Our crafter is at it here, making, I believe I selected a pair of earrings. Ooh. Ooh. 
Flozilny. Sometimes I wish I could uh, fast forward my skills in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Shawnee. Me too. Uh, he just finished up, and look at that. We've got the earrings that we we've chosen the UI. We'll go through this again uh, in a little more detail. But these earrings we're using iron yum and as the metal and amethyst as the crystal. They're excellent quality because Ryan here, uh, he is max skill in gemology and he likes the gemology skill. So really in his element. Um, and we're gonna, we could sell it if we wanted. We do love a good rags to riches challenge. We can list it on Plopsy if you have nifty knitting. Uh, you can wear it right away and you can gift it and people will wear it right away as well. We'll show that off. And we could charge it on the crystal grid. You could also name it if you craft something that you think is really unique, that you really love. Um, you can name it whatever you'd like so that it is known as the piece that, you know, your own custom piece. Customization was truly the team's goal. In, in making the jewelry crafting a new skill and a new hobby. So we'll put that in I love that. I feel now. like you can start your own collection, name everything themed out. Exactly. If there's a specific combination of metals and crystals that you love, you could use any kind of design and you know, name them all the same. It's, it's so fun for storytelling. As far as what is possible to create, if we open up this UI here, there's a lot. We have 12 of each kind of design. So there are 12 necklaces ranging from things that are a little more basic, things that are a little more flashy. We of course have uh, some new <laughs> sibling pieces to the community loved uh, eyeball ring. We've got a much more uh, fashionable version of eye pieces that you can make. All the way to, of course, plum bob themed jewelry. And each of these unlocks as you raise your gemology skill. So lots of fun designs really across the spectrum. Maybe Stephen can speak to that part a bit more, our, our uh, <laughs> art spectrum with the jewelry. And lots of fun Easter yeah. eggs from the team and how we named them. Yeah, I, I can't remember how many combinations can we have on these pieces. It's, it's in the it's thousands, in the right? thousands. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and so you're able to craft all those unique ones. But we also did um, like a set, you know, bracelet, necklace, rings as, as well. And... Um, the concept team did a fantastic job looking through so many different styles and combinations. It's not until you, you start looking through reference um, how many styles of jewelry are. So even though we have thousands in there, it's um, the breadth is enormous. So yeah, the team did a fantastic job, mainly just getting these in game. If you can think about getting all those pieces in game, it takes some time. Definitely. It was a monumental effort that paid off. And don't worry, Simmers, each skill level you unlock, the matching set pieces across all the types of jewelry unlock at the same time. We wouldn't gate them like that for you. I think what impresses me most is that no matter what combination of metal or crystal you might pick, whether it's something you've got in your inventory already or something you buy to use custom maybe for the first time, uh, every combination looks good. No, no matter how much you might think the colors might clash. Um, and I have tried. We, everyone on the team tried to make pieces that maybe wouldn't look so, so good on Sims, but no, they're all beautiful. Uh -huh. <laughs> While he works on that one, maybe we will have Serena, our collector, study up on gemology a little bit. She does not know as much about gemology. So let's, uh, let's have her do a little studying. Oh, 
Oh, love how you can put clutter are. on the top of that. It adds so much personality. <laughs> Here's our finished eye necklace piece. Let's go ahead and we'll sell this one. Why not? That's a pretty good price. And right away, making some simoleons out of this new hobby. One thing that we did bring back um, for players who know and love The Sims 3 uh, is the ability to also cut gemstones out of the crystals that you, you find and that you have. Um, so there's a few different designs, including, of course, a new gnome to <laughs> join all the other gnomes in the game. Some of the cuts that, you know, may be known and loved from past iterations of the game. And a few new ones, too. I think we can make a star-shaped gemstone. And how about we make it with plumbite? So, by doing this with the gemstone, uh, this crystal will make it so that once we charge it, which we can do soon as it's getting later in the afternoon in The Sims time, uh, there's a special effect for every single crystal you might choose. The, all of them are different, and there's different effects also based on what other packs you might have. Every single crystal has an effect though, so long as you have crystal creations to charge them with. So Plumbite, for example, will make your Sims needs increase slowly over time, a built-in needs manager, and uh, the Sim, if you were wearing it, uh, will make other people around them happy if they're wearing charged Plumbite. When it's in the form of a gemstone, it acts as sort of a area of effect for Sims once it's charged. Do the different shapes affect uh, the area or affect it at all, or is it... No, it's purely whatever aesthetic suits your sim's need and your sim's mood. If you're feeling a little more awesome, celestial, so the star-shaped one we're crafting now is right up your alley if you're a bit more into gnomes. We've got one for you. It's awesome that we don't have to be tied to a specific shape for a specific outcome. Definitely. No, we want to make sure our simmers have freedom to storytell and to create whatever it is that they want to create with this pack. We're getting close to this one being done. And we've got our beautiful plum bite star. So, so I think what we'll do, it's 7.30 at night. It's, uh, it's the first quarter of the moon. Let's go and charge this plum bite on our crystal grid, this uh, star gemstone. So you mentioned it's the first quarter of the moon. How does the moon affect charging? So the moon, the phases of the moon, will make your gems charge and your jewelry charge either faster or slower, depending on what phase of the moon uh, it is. So for instance, now we've got that, that uh, first quarter and it's charging at a pretty normal rate, right? Maybe what the average would be. On a new moon phase where there is no visible moon, your jewelry and gemstones will charge slower. Um, I mean, there's no moon to charge them then, right? Or at least not visibly. And then I think my favorite is on a full moon. When you have things to charge, they will charge super fast. Um, it's beautiful. This crystal grid will light up uh, like the northern lights almost. It gets so bright to show you just how fast it's charging. We have a few other pieces in our inventory that I think... We might as well charge while we're here. So I'm going to drag them out onto this charging grid so the moon can work its magic. I love how you can charge oh, looks like many at once. 
yes, we wanted to make sure that no matter how many you might be doing, how many crystal effects you wanted to see happen, uh, that you could charge many, <laughs> as many as uh, grids you could place times six. I actually placed two things that were fully charged, and I think, <laughs> Shawnee, you could probably guess which two. Is it the necklace? Or no, it's the two that are bright. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at guessing. Very bright. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's okay because as you can see when you hover over the grid it will tell you how long until each piece you've put on the grid is charged and it's telling us loud and clear the lunar goddess bracelet and the bling bracelet are both fully charged so we can actually collect those and how about we wear one of them since we know it has an effect let's see the bling bracelet has baconite metal and amethyst gem, and it's fully charged, which means, according to the tooltip, this sim will gain energy faster while sleeping. Excellent. And this sim has a chance to wake up with an inspired lucid dream moodlet. So really good for your creative sims to be able to wake up already inspired to start the day. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. So let's go ahead and wear it, which is one of the most exciting parts of the pack. We worked very hard to make it so that any jewelry you crafted in live mode could be equipped immediately to your sim from live mode without having to enter CAS and see what was going on. You can equip it just to the current outfit you're wearing or to all outfits. I can show that off down here when you click on the jewelry. And it wasn't enough for us to do that with just, you know, your active sim or even your active household, but only Serena is home with us. So we'll show this off with her as our example. You can gift jewelry to other sims, which maybe you might expect. We can give gifts uh, to our friends, to our enemies, to anyone we want in this game. But say we wanted to gift Serena these chunky earrings. Um, you can click it and click gift to. We can see we've also got a bit of a romance budding here with our collector. Free for bed. Bubble dish. Bubble and you can see she changed from the earrings she was wearing into the chunky earrings right away. So if you have a sim you really want to dress up without loading into their household and there's a jewelry piece you think is perfect for them, you just have to gift it to them. And I'm assuming because something is charged that means you can give them the buffs as well so that they live better lives. <laughs> Absolutely, Shawnee. You can improve other Sims' lives with giving them charged jewelry gifts. Maybe you can cause a little mischief too if you're feeling up to that, but it's definitely an impactful way to not only dress Sims, but to uh, add a little spice to their life. One thing we didn't talk about yet, which is very exciting both for our crafter Sim and our collector Sim, is one of the new gemstone cuts we added in the pack, which is this one here, the seed-shaped gemstone. It unlocks when you reach level three of the gemology skill, and you can make it with any crystal you have. I do recommend using a more common crystal um, because it has its own special purpose. We actually have some already growing in our garden. Because once our crafter finishes cutting that seed shaped gemstone, you can come and plant it outside in planter boxes and in the world to grow a crystal tree. As you level up in gardening and you tend to your tree so that its quality goes from normal all the way up to that excellent. Uh, the types of crystals that it will grow 
will increase in rarity. And my God, it is just a beautiful, beautiful tree. Stephen, on the art side, can you tell us more about how we came up with this tree? Yeah, this was really interesting. Of course, design went, hey, we'd love a crystal tree. And, you know, on the art side, like, mm -hmm, okay, this seems a little fantastical, how we're going to, like, integrate this into the world, make it feel believable. So the, the team did, you know, several variants on it. Um, they all looked fantastic. Um, but we kind of settled on this sort of bonsai sweep, you know, keeping that organic feel. So even though it's made from crystals, grown from crystals, it still feels like it's it's unique and, and lives within the, the Sims world. It's perfectly whimsical. And I know our Simmers a little... love a little fantasticness. <laughs> yes. Even the little sprouted version is so cute and so pretty at the same time. How is our crafter doing? They're almost done. Cutting gemstones and crafting jewelry, it's hard work. It's not something that you can complete super quickly. It takes skill and it takes time. So as your Sims are growing their skill, try to be patient with them as they might uh, encounter a few bumps along the road. If a Sim is crafting jewelry and they're not too good at crystal crafting and gemology crafting yet, or if they're in a particularly bad mood or just not having a good time, there's a chance that they might botch the jewelry they make and uh, get a unique piece of jewelry that isn't exactly what they were hoping for. As you grow crystals, as you discover more interesting effects of what might happen when you charge them, uh, there's, there's a lot of power that will unlock for you. Um, here are some examples, you know, with Jade, which is one of the new crystals we added in Crystal Creations, your sim will find crystals randomly <laughs> when they're doing things around their house, if it's fully charged. Um, if they have hematite, uh, Sims won't die <laughs> if they're wearing something that has charged hematite. That one is a game changer. A literally. Personal favorite. Uh, yeah, literally. It, it, not dying? That's incredible. On the flip side, if you want to maybe befriend the Grim Reaper, uh, and as part of the Crystal Crafter aspiration, you might notice that there's a goal of summoning the Grim Reaper with jet gemstone or jewelry. Charged jet, which is a rare crystal, allows you to summon the Grim Reaper to come hang out and chat with you. I know what I'm doing once this comes out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to chill out with Grim a little bit. All right, so we had seen that uh, Serena and Ryan here, they are in a pretty serious relationship. So I think it's time for us to maybe propose using a ring we crafted. It's something very near and dear to my heart uh, as I proposed to my fiance while we developed this pack. And being able to propose with the ring you craft yourself to your Sims partner, uh, just makes it extra special. Shawnee, I'm gonna pick some kind of fun design here, but what uh, what metal and crystal do you think we should use? Oh, I would love gold and plumbite because I want that in real life. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, it's a beautiful combination. We definitely have some gold. Let's see if we've got plumbite. Scrolling on through. So we don't have any in our inventory, and since it's rare, we can't just buy it. But how about we use... We do have Jet, which is also rare, and uh, it charges the Summon Grim Reaper. That's kind of fun. Till death do us part and all. 
So how about we do Golden Jet? Works for me. My expensive taste always gets me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 862 simoleons isn't cheap, but it's worth it for this ring. So let's get on to crafting. And we will let him do what he does best, uh -huh. which is make beautiful, beautiful jewelry. We can have Serena come on over. Looks like a bunch of our jewelry and our gemstone are ready to collect. So let's go ahead and collect some of those items. Speaking of charging, do you have to recharge items or do they hold the charge forever? Great question. Um, you do have to recharge them. They will lose their charge after some amount of time, depending on uh, how you're utilizing it, uh, what, what kind of effect it has but you do need to recharge them every once in a while. Your sim will let you know though when their charge jewelry is no longer working because they will get a moodlet that tells you, um, hey, it's not charged anymore. It's making me a little unhappy that it's not charged. If we go put out this gemstone that we charged, you can see it's glowing, so radiant, so lovely, and that is the way you know that the charge, uh, it tells you when you hover over it also how much charge is remaining on items. So our star-shaped gemstone has two days of charge on it. So I for two know. days, yeah. uh, when they're near this gemstone, their needs will increase a little and they'll be a little happier. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost done designing this ring. And it's a new day, which means our crystal tree is ripe for harvesting. So let's go do that. And when you hover over the harvest crystals interaction on the tree, it actually tells you what crystals have grown. Um, it's not guaranteed to be the same crystals every day. So you'll definitely want to take a close look at what it is you are collecting each time. And do those produce crystals daily? They do. Any tending to do in the garden? Looks like our newly planted crystal tree needed a little water. And so does our little baby sprout one. We have crafted the ring. It's a beautiful day out. I think we can propose. So we're going to put yes. this in our inventory. I hope she says yes. We're going to make shot as beautiful as we can. I'm a hopeless romantic of a player and a person, so I want to make sure they have the best lighting, the best backdrop they possibly can. And let's do it. So, in the romance, of course there's the normal propose interaction. If you don't have a crafted ring to propose Boy. with, or you are okay with using the standard proposal interaction, but if you've got crystal creations and you've got some crafted rings, you can propose and it brings up the list of all of the rings you have in your inventory. But we know we just made this special plum bob ring that's gold with jet, just for you, Shawnee, to propose to Serena with. Huh. Oh, I hope she says jumping. yes. Cute. So cute. And I hope you could see, I tried to zoom in there, that it was our golden jet ring. And she put it on right away. So she talks with her hands, as many people do, but you can see she's wearing it there on her finger. We did make sure that we were not only representing Western culture and how a proposal works, you can propose with any ring, no matter which finger that ring might go on, um, just to make it a little extra special. Under friendly and small talk, there is show off jewelry. 
And you just throw up the hands, show off what you've got on. And there are two different types of showing off jewelry, depending on what you're wearing. Yes, we can say that Serena likes flirting with her fiance. <laughs> Speaking of showing off, should we show off some of the build by items? Uh, that sounds they're great. good. The perfect idea. We're going to head on over to Newcrest. And we are going to populate <laughs> this lot in Newcrest with all of the crystal creations build by and the style brooms. Let's go take a look. Steven, it's your time to shine like the crystals. <laughs> uh, thanks, Scoob. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I briefly talked about all the elements that went into a jewelry studio um, before. And as soon as the crystal charging came online through design, um, you know, we coined it as like occult light in a way. We kind of wanted to reflect that within the decor and the clothing style of the pack. And we had pulled some ref earlier of the dark academia style. Color palette, the forms, the mood it evoked really spoke to the team. Uh, so much so like our brand manager, Brittany, coined the term dark and dreamy. And that just fired off our creative um, cells immediately. And so, we kind of went for a sort of modest 1930s, 40s furniture style, but because this was meant to be our, an artist studio, you know, every piece would be highly curated by that artist, whether it was because they loved the aesthetic of it or whether it inspired them. And, and so it's, it almost feels like a, you know, turn of the century boarding school professor's room in a way. Um, but it gets across that idea that, you know, this is a little bit more scholarly, you know, we have the bookshelf, for example, you know, these are people who love to study crystals and jewelry is a fine craft. And um, this, we love the fact that we could get a ladder on this bookcase. And we also have one without the ladder, so you can have, you know, a huge library uh, room if you, if you so desire. Uh, but the ladder lets also, you live out that, those dreams of owning your own <laughs> bookshop and going from shelf to shelf. <laughs> yeah, and it's great because they have little pieces of clutter on them. So, you know, it, it gets across that, you know, lived in sort of vibe you expect from a, an artist studio. Um, and down at the bottom, you can see we have, you know, next to the ferns, we have other pieces in there. Um, again, we didn't want to go too gothic. Um, so a lot of these pieces you could quite easily put in other builds, you know, they're almost like accent contemporary items. So even if you have like a very modern looking apartment style you've built, you drop one of these in it instantly becomes, you know, a focus of a room. Um, the pieces you're looking at right now, these are some of the pieces I love so much. The concept team did a fantastic job of storytelling. We have this field case up at the top. It's, it's just chock full of little details and that you can project any kind of narrative you want onto it. You know, I can imagine them rushing out into the, the wilderness with this tucked under the arm, writing down notes about the crystals they found, taking little chips off with some of the tools in there. And that expands into the, the actual tools that they use within the studio as well. You know, we have clutter. <clears throat> that evokes that idea of, yeah, I'm busy working on this and then I have to switch over to the desk and I'm going to do some sketching and then I'm looking up at these posters that I've got on the wall that indicate the phases of the moon or break down the quality of certain crystals. So again, there's just the layering of detail 
and the materials in the set we, we really loved. Um, the materials are warm, you know, it's a lot of wood, it's got that kind of old touch, we've got a little wear and tear in there as well. So again, just to push that kind of antique um, vintage style. It's so gorgeous. It really is <laughs> dark and dreamy. I, I have been obsessed with that phrase since the first time we set it during development, but it really does capture the whole look and feel. Um, and I know a lot of people on the team are obsessed with our little fern <laughs> and it's, it's a little, little pot here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. It just adds, a, cause some of the reference we had, there was, there was a lot of plants, you know, and it just kind of softens the mood. It adds a little glamor. Um, there's also the lamp way back in in the top right. Um, and one thing we noticed in jewelry studios, there's a lot of light. You need a lot of light. You need to see what you're doing all the time. And we're like, okay, well, we don't really want to do a, a modern angle poise lamp. And we we stumbled across this, and it just it just slotted into the theme so well. You know, it's got that brass older quality to it, and just the craftsmanship really spoke to us. It's a standout piece, absolutely. It goes in all of my builds now when I'm uh, when I'm playing at work. <laughs> in the back here, we've got the three swatches of the styled room that we've created for your own little pre-built gemology work uh, workspace. One of our game designers uh, took the time to build this together and get feedback from Steven. Um, one thing you'll notice in this room, there is a charging table <laughs> on the inside, but it's worth noting for all of our simmers out there who want to engage with the charging feature that your gemstones and your jewelry will only charge between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. if it is outdoors. Of course, the grid has to see the moon if you want the moon to charge. Um, so keep that in mind when you're playing. You'll want to move this, uh, this charging grid outside if you want the full effects of the charging. But luckily it is live draggable. So while you're in live mode, you can move it around without any fuss. So cute, I just want to move in already. <laughs> Those rugs, die for. I'm a big fan of the uh, purpley bluey swatches. Very, very cute. Very perfect for setting the mood. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our, our palette here is very muted and that was purposeful because we really want to make sure that on the clothing or even on um, the display cabinets, the jewelry is really gonna pop, right? all those bright um, crystals and the rich metals are going to sing against this kind of uh, more muted palette. Speaking of clothing, should we go take a look at all the cast items? We've loaded up a family that includes, of course, our crystal crafter and uh, his now fiance, <laughs> the crystal collector. <laughs> and. Steven, I will, I will let you talk at length about the beautiful cast, but I just had to start us on my favorite piece, which is our beloved spicy grandpa sweater with the increasingly deep V-neck to show off any beautiful necklace <laughs> you might create with this pack. Yeah, I find it hilarious. This is the piece that you uh, glommed onto. Um, yeah, so it's the same sort of situation um, we find ourselves in, right, we wanted a variety of artists to help the player tell an individual story. And so we did usually do that through clothing styles. And so with the Dark Academia, we kind of went, okay, well, let's lean into that a little bit, but, you know, update it a little, keep that vintage quality. Um, and so we have a lot of nice tailored pieces, you know, we've pleated skirts, um, waistcoats, um, shirts, um, they all have a kind of 
again, individual quality, but still fall into a kind of everyday, you know, they're not in your face type artistic. Um, they're very, again, like the palette kind of subdued. Um, and again, this is mainly just to get across that slight um, creative aspect with the occult light aspect. So, you know, we didn't want to lean into any of those too heavily. I really like this one. This is kind of based on a kimono jacket and here's the, uh, the classic you know, starched shirt um, with the waistcoat over the top. One thing you will notice is that we have a lot of rolled up sleeves or short sleeves or open necks. And again, this is to make sure that, you know, none of your jewelry is hidden behind any sort of clothing. You mentioned that pleated skirt, Stephen, and I love it so much. So let, I'm gonna let us all take a nice long look at it here. Yeah, the team had a blast. I mean, it's a real collaboration process. Um, and so people were just posting them up. Hey, I love this little detail. And that's the thing, it's right. You have, you go, you go for a form and a silhouette and then you start layering details on top of it. And it just like pushes it into, again, a sort of elevated style. There's little Easter eggs of jewelry on some of these pieces as well. Again, we didn't want to go so overt, since you'd be, you know, putting pieces of jewelry onto your uh, character anyway. I love the little uh, moon pendant we have on this piece, but let's show off some of those other beautiful pieces I know you're talking about. <laughs> I love the subtle print on that one. So gorgeous. This piece has um, you know, a nice little trim along the base, a slightly different texture, and of course, you know, we have to keep dropping in that jewelry aesthetic whenever we can. <laughs> Just love the soft patterns. They're so gorgeous. Yeah, our palette is purposely meant to do a lot of mixing and matching. So, you know, even a skirt will pair nicely with whatever color of shirt you choose. They're all balanced really well. I love all the little jewelry details that are added throughout from the dresses to the shoes to all of it. Yeah, I particularly love this one because we managed to get a polo neck but we get jewelry over the top of it. So that was that was the biggest win for Gotta me for this pack, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We also did a little extra work to give child, toddler, and infant sims their first pair of uh, beautiful crystal earrings and a little bracelet. <laughs> it's so cute. I see myself using this as a friendship bracelet with uh, my Sims in the future. And it comes in some fun swatches, of course. You can see the earrings here. Toddlers also get the earrings. And we know um, there are many cultures all across the world where Infants also get their ears pierced, and we wanted to make sure that no matter where you're from, no matter how your family views piercings, that you can see yourself represented that way. So cute. <laughs> yeah. Steven, you gotta, you gotta talk to me about these shoes. I am obsessed with the crystal heels <laughs> again it's um you know because our, our team were so passionate about this pack um i think it was jess 
one of our cast modelers. She went, we got up, we got up these. And I was like, yeah, we do. Um, so go off and build them for me, please. Um, yeah, she did a fantastic job. Um, again, all the colors just mix so well with the rest of the palette, even though, again, like the trees have fantastical sort of height and it still fits in really well. Exactly. I think my favorite fun fact about the crystal shoes especially is all of the swatches are a perfect match to different crystal colors that are in the game that you can use to make some of your jewelry. Like I believe this pair is a diamond pair, so if you were wearing diamond jewelry that you crafted, they would match. All right, Stephen, you want to talk about all of the beautiful hair we've got here? Yeah, we love doing hair so much. Um, and of course, um, we had to feature jewelry pieces in it. Um, again, nothing too overt, um, kind of subtle. Because of course, if you're an artist, you can do up your hair and then show off your jewelry. I know this is like a favorite. <laughs> this is a favorite. I think some of the team are considering trying to wear their hair like this. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it, Shawnee. Of course, we saw this awesome short hair on our crafter sim it comes with that cool ombre as well as the standard colors as well and i think my favorite hair is this one that the art team did with you, Stephen, where it's got these cool rings in the back. Yeah, I was kind of saying, because, you know, we want to, again, we want to try and get as much range of hairstyles to reflect the, the artist story you might want to tell. And this one definitely feels a little more edgy than the previous ones. Um, but again, they introduced some, um, have you shown the, the rainbow? version yet. That's... My favorite swatch you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember when they posted that up and I was like, whoa, good choice. It's so fun. You just, you look at this, any sim with this hair, with this, you know, beautiful, colorful, expressive self, and it tells an instant story. There's so much character, so much personality. It's amazing. I think... There's one last thing that I know we want to talk about with our cast. Well, two things actually. The first, you'll notice on our crafter and collector sims who were in world with us that the jewelry that they crafted in game are visible in cast. That's because they are wearing them in live mode. If you come into for example, the bracelets with accessories. You can see all of the jewelry pieces they are wearing because we equipped them in live mode. Um, it's worth noting that if you have not crafted it, have not equipped it, it won't show up in cast. So you really, you have to make the jewelry in order to use the jewelry, which we think is a fun new way of expressing your sim self And then I think the last really fun thing we could talk about, Stephen, if you want to go into details, was this set of jewelry that we have in Cass. I'll go to this sim actually to show it off. Yeah, this is our Aretha B set. Um, it was wonderful working with her as an art director. You know, I spend most of my day making notes and, and guiding artists. Um, when she did her presentation, we're just like, uh, yeah, these are all fantastic. 
let's go let's go ahead and make them um what i love to buy them is they're they're so delicate i mean we have such a wide range of jewelry in this pack and yet these these stand out um as a unique sort of look on their own I know I love them. Every meeting we had with Aretha B, I would leave with just the biggest smile on my face because these pieces are so, so beautiful. And one thing I really love, I mentioned earlier that when you propose, you know, we have lots of different fingers that the rings go on, um, but we made sure for our players who are more into um, being in cast to make those decisions that the Aretha B ring uh, does go on the uh, traditional Western uh, ring finger on the left hand. I have it on the nails right now so we can zoom in and see it well, but there are matching swatches to the necklace and the earrings we showed off just before this. So delicate and gorgeous. Really, truly, it was a pleasure to work with her. I think with that, we've reached the end of showing off Cass for Crystal Creations. Oh, I'm ready to base so many of my IRL looks on this gorgeous stuff. I'm ready to go shopping, uh, make my sim self match my real self. I'm super excited because the team really knocked it out of the park with this one. This walkthrough was so informative. Thank you, Scoob and Steven, for taking us through the Crystal Creation stuff pack. I am so excited for this. And thank you for joining us today. You can pick up Crystal Creations tomorrow, and I can't wait to see all your jewelry. Dag, dag.